We move now on to Ports of Auckland, um, and we've got Ella, Ella joining us, um, and Alistair. Um, kia ora koutou. Uh, not to be confused with the last uh, statement of intent report, this, um, this report is to consider shareholder feedback on Ports of Auckland Limited's draft statement of corporate intent. Uh, just to note, the statement of corporate intent um, has different timeframes and slightly different requirements. It's governed by the Port Companies Act, not the Local Government Act, hence why we see the shareholder feedback coming now. I also add that the feedback um, on this draft statement of corporate intent is coloured by the fact that we've just taken ownership of the port start of July, so we've come to this process fairly late in the piece. Um, I note on that that in the future there might be an opportunity to front end it with a letter of expectation or similar. Um, with that context, uh, I would also add that under the Port Companies Act, um, Port companies do have an express um, obligation to operate as a successful business. All their other strategic objectives must be viewed in light of that. Um, through the chair, uh, I'll run through the proposed shareholder feedback and then take any queries and questions from around the table. Um, the first piece of feedback is around the objectives, so noting that the um, port's objectives should be aligned to Council's um, strategic framework um, as set out in Council's uh, strategic documents. Uh, I would note that the objectives set out in the draft statement of corporate intent do demonstrate a willingness to align to, to Council's broader strategies. Uh, the feedback is designed to ask the port to be a little bit more clear on, on which strategies um, it's aligned to. Uh, the next part was the key performance targets. There was a bit of departure between last year's draft statement of corporate intent and this year's, so just requesting a little bit of clarification around that where appropriate. Um, next, we had the cooperation with council. This was a bit of a theme throughout the statement of intent process, so considered it appropriate to, to request that the port um, make a strong commitment to cooperating with the rest of the council group. Again, it's not totally absent in the um, draft statement of corporate intent. However, they could be slightly more directive on that. Um, next is the mana whenua engagement. Uh, council has <coughs> obligations to, to um, connect up with mana whenua and uh, in, in the case of our other CCOs, we do direct them to develop um, Maori response, responsiveness plans um, in line with our Maori responsiveness framework. Um, I would add that at an officer level, I've connected Ports of Auckland Limited up with Te Waka Angamoa, and those conversations are being had. However, consider it appropriate that the draft statement of corporate intent should also indicate a stronger commitment there. Um, <coughs> The next piece of feedback was on Ports of Auckland's work with central government. So just making it really clear that central government um, are, are doing work in the port strategy um, and supply chain space. Uh, and I guess the point here is that ports should be clear that they, that, that relationship exists and they should also be seeking to communicate um, frequently with council on their work with central government in that space. Um, the final piece of feedback was around sustainability. Um, Ports of Auckland have, in conversation have demonstrated some of the work that they're doing in the sustainability space. Um, staff advise that this is something that we could really commend them on if only we could measure it. So we've asked them to insert some KPTs that can demonstrate their work in the sustainability space going forward. Uh, the only other note I would add is that recommendation C has been crossed out. Um, under the relationship agreement that uh, the governing body adopted through the long-term plan with the port, um, there is scope to have an annual update from the port. We're still refining just how the, the format content and, and um, of that update, hence September might be a little bit too, too soon. Uh, happy to take any questions. Okay, I'll um, just to put it on the table, I'll move, do I have a seconder? Yes, Madam Chair. 
Thank you. Um, questions? <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Ella. Um, just in terms of the mana whenua engagement, you said at the beginning of your <coughs> presentation that the ports aren't under the Local Government Act, but you've noted the Local Government Act here. Can mm. you just explain how then if, what the relevance is of that comment? Uh, yes, um, through the Chair, under the Local Government Act, Auckland Council has obligations to the Treaty of Waitangi. Um, that is the policy reference there that's set out in Section 4 of that Act. So while the Port Companies um, Act doesn't say that ports have a spe specific obligation, we consider that the Council group, including the port, should be working with us to achieve those aims. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, well. Yeah. Sorry, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I noticed, noticed a lot of the reporting is historical um, on cash flow, whereas perhaps the port's biggest impact on us is future looking. So, are we going to see things about their asset management program, their capital program, and how that may potentially affect dividend streams and so forth? So, we have a bit of forward leaning on that. How is that going to be? I know this is new, so how is that going to be keyed into our relationship? Maybe if we, um, through Matthew might be able to um, give a bit more detail on this, but through a lot of the discussions that um, led into the disestablishment of ACIL and, and working out with ports um, how we would interact, one of the big focuses was on how they would input into our um, financial planning processes um, because of the importance of um, their dividend to us. Um, so we've emphasised to them that it's really important that we get a, a good, a good, accurate forecast. And um, given where we're at in relation to our, um, our debt limits, um, their capital expenditure is of particular interest um, to us. So um, the finance team and our financial reporting team, um, Ella did a, a wonderful job of chucking us all on the <coughs> minibus and going down to ports and actually physically meeting up with, with um, everybody's counterparts down there and starting to build those relationships so that everybody can work together on those. Um, sorry, Alistair. Um, I, I would also add to that that part of the feedback does ask for a bit of a clearer explanation on, on the difference in projections from this statement of corporate intent to last year's. Um, although I, uh, I don't generally think that the statement of corporate intent is the, the place to give the really granular breakdown no, it's um, not. on projections. But we, we do we are putting those relationships in place um, so that those conversations can be effective. So I take the manager as a work in progress, but you know, I, I still think it's important, although well, those may should not be part of the statement of intent, it should be part what should be in the statement of intent is that they will do this work and report to us on their forward projections. That, that, so that's correct. Yep. Matthew, do you want to add anything? Well, just through the chair and, and for assurance, there have been good connections, and I've been working with the CFO there as well um, to give you some assurance the numbers that are contained in here uh, and in respect to um, capital expenditure based on their five-year business program, that's very much aligned to the LTP numbers we're working with at the moment. So so there's good alignment, and, and I think everything in their SCI here signals the way in which we'll work together and you know we we should not expect any surprises and they'll be reaching out and keeping right. us informed. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, sorry, Councillor Darby. Uh, thank you Ella and Alistair. Um, just on the page 200 of the agenda 5.2 working for Auckland and serving New Zealand. Um, the, the port occupies a footprint that is right in the heart um, of, the, of this downtown city centre area. Um, there's, there's a section there, Ports of Auckland will work cooperatively with Auckland Council and CCOs to its assist in the delivery of outcomes related to the Waterfront Development Master Plan and Auckland Plan, Unitary Plan. Um, the port has a major impact on the transport network and I would expect them to <coughs> also work with Auckland Transport on transport planning and uh, transport solutions. Um, should we be adding that there? We know that there are already a, some things that need to be resolved with the port company, like a, a teardrop bus stop and there's rail solutions, there's um, freight access, etc. Um, 
Thank you, Councillor Darby. Uh, through the chair, the, the shareholder feedback um, under the headings objectives and the cooperation with the council group is designed to put the platform of that bigger council group picture specifically. So in terms of the cooperation with council group, we've asked the port to be clearer about exactly which CCOs they'll be cooperating with and which uh, council strategies um, they'll, they'll be seeking to line up with. Um, within that, Auckland Transport is a specific mention there, and um, I note that under the broader objectives bit, we have signalled um, our strategic framework, that being the Auckland Plan, Waterfront Plan, City Centre Master, Master Plan, Central Wharf Strategy. So we are trying to build a picture there, and I think moving into next year's Statement of Corporate Intent um, process, we'll be able to front end that and be a bit more pointed with the sorts of outcomes we'd like to see. Well, could we do that now? Because there are some unresolved issues there that relate specifically to transport. And I'm just, you're saying it's assumed it's included. I, I would prefer that it's just a bit more specific. Yeah, I, the port has a major impact on, trans on mm -hmm. transportation. If, if you pass us those points, we will include those in the feedback as it goes back about those specific transport planning yeah, I'm, matters. I think that's very valid. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Casey. Yeah, I'm, I've just been um, revising the, the SOI in terms of uh, delighted neighbours. We've got delighted customers, but we don't. We, there's nothing really much in here about being socially responsible, even though we ask them to be. And, and their measure is to, to hold four community reference groups per year, but we don't know, <coughs> are they being held? Who comes? What issues are being discussed? You know, are they a riot? Are they kind of... I'd like to know more about those um, reference groups. Yeah. But also, um, you know, can we be a bit more proactive in being a good neighbour? Good, good, the port being a good neighbour is really important. A delighted neighbour is even better. Mm -hmm. So if we have delighted customers, let's have a measure for delighted. And also, um, iwi and community are in the same box here, and I d I'm, I'm not sure that that's appropriate either. I think good neighbours quite different to having um, good relationships with iwi, quite different. So maybe you can have a, we look at that, and the next time they come in, they can talk to us more about what that actually means. And maybe have another target rather than just hold four meetings. What about lack of complaints from neighbours? Yep. Uh, thank you, Councillor. I've taken that feedback and I'll, I'll incorporate that um, in advising ports when they come to update. Council, um, I, I would note that just on the mana whenua comments, um, the feedback here uh, is, is directive in setting out Council's obligations and in conversation I have asked them to develop a separate measure because I think that's quite Good. important. Excellent, thank you. Council, just by way of addition, um, I have attended one of the reference groups because they are neighbours, uh, you know, of, of the port and issues such as transport and other things and noise do come up and they do address them so they do that quite well but it would be really great for you to hear it from them as well I mean go I, along I think, to one even yeah the, the, the point is that you're not aware of it yeah so that's um, very valid thank you for that uh, Councillor Fletcher well thank you Madam Chair um, as most of you will know I, I didn't support the disestablishment of the uh, CCO Auckland Council Investments but that said, um, I just want to, and I've noted very carefully what has taken place as we have a transitionary regime, and I want to acknowledge Ella. Um, I think she's done an outstanding job. Any questions that I've had have been fully answered, um, so I'd just like some recognition. This has been a, um, a real change for us in the way that we um, take uh, accountability for this, this asset um, that is 100% owned by the Auckland Council. So I'd, I'd really like to applaud the professionalism with which she has brought this forward. So thank you. Thank you. I think we can do you that in an appropriate way. Thank you very much. <laughs> I support that. I too didn't support the disestablishment. So I uh, concur 100% with my councillor colleague on the way that, uh, having made that decision, how this has progressed. Mm -hmm. So thank you. We have a um, mover and a seconder. Uh, all those in favour say aye. 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 Against, carried. Thank you. Now we move on to item 10 and in the open agenda with regards to the open process for the confidential item coming up a bit later, reacquisition in North Takanini for stormwater. 
Uh, we have Andrew Chin and Craig McElroy. No, we don't. We just have Craig McElroy. Just the one of us today, Madam Chair. It's all right. Quality, not quantity. Colour. And colour, of course. <laughs> so for this open agenda item, I was just going to take the report has been read. There are there's a, some issues around land acquisition which will require a confidential conversation, but I think the report is pr pretty self-explanatory. Happy to move. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Sayers? Any comments, questions? No? Well, then we'll just leave it at that. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against carries. <coughs> Item um, 11, you might as well just stay where you are. Um, item 11 is, of course, the information only on uh, the, imp on the um, uh, public record of memos and briefings of workshops held since the 19th of June. Um, I'll move. Do I have a seconder on that? Let him second. Thank you, Afiso. Um, any discussion or comments? I'm sure you've all read it. Great. All those in favour say aye. Aye. It's carried. Thank you. So now I'll just, uh, there's no uh, consideration of extraordinary items, so I'll now formally move that the public be excluded as we uh, move into confidential. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Fesso. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against carried. Just give us five minutes, please, while we get rid of the pros of people.